Um, how does their TV consumption compare to their online video consumption? And how do they feel about TV versus video advertising? Uh, here to ask these and many other questions uh, of our brave student panel uh, from the City College of San Francisco is Nick Fuller, Senior Director of Marketing from the youth-focused social media and marketing agency, Mr. Youth. Uh, please welcome Nick and the panel. Oh, they're coming in from outside. <laughs> Be here any second. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name's Nick Fuller, and uh, I'm the Senior Marketing Director here at, Mis at Mr. Youth. And uh, we're a social marketing company uh, based primarily out of New York City. And uh, our reason for being is uh, really to create advocacy among brands and our clients. And we do that through a highly integrated mix of social, digital, uh, experiential marketing, any way that we can reach the consumer to create a seamless experience for them and uh, drive advocacy. And uh, the name of our agency, Mr. Youth, is uh, really kind of speaks to our, our founding. Uh, back in 2002, we really focused on youth marketing. We were out there on college campuses. Is, is, is these students have probably run into ambassadors from brands. Uh, some of them are probably our own. And uh, to really get out there and sample products and get them in the hands of students. And as uh, social media really evolved, uh, we were lucky to evolve along with it and continue targeting millennials in that generation. And now, Mr. Youth, uh, we focus across you know, all different verticals, all different demographics. And uh, you know, college is still kind of like our primary area of expertise. But um, you know, we're all on Facebook now. We're all using YouTube and Twitter. Uh, end of story. Everybody's on it. And uh, we've just been fortunate enough to uh, grow up with it and make it part of our own fabric. So um, today's chat is really to uh, get to know these college students up here and uh, how they're using, how they're using uh, new technologies, new platforms to uh, engage with content. And how are you watching? How are you learning? How are you digesting? And, uh, and then how are you sharing that? So uh, we're gonna go through some insights from our own research. Uh, actually, this is a great, we're actually piggybacking a little bit on some research that we had done earlier on uh, in this summer on this new incoming freshman college class. There are some things, if we look at millennials, that is different about about this generation than just say five years ago. And it's important to know what those differences are and know what's the same in order to understand how do we create compelling content because their values are very much different. They were seven years old when September 11th happened. So they have a very different worldview and their use of, uh, and how brands can interact with that is really profoundly changed as well. So you can read the full report at meet2015.com. Definitely go there. And we're gonna flow through a lot of uh, broad stats as it relates to this report in terms of video usage very quickly, and then we'll open it up for discussion. So if you feel like you saw anything on the screen and you wanna reference it later, we'll be blogging about it. Uh, go to the site, give us your email, and, and you'll make sure you're on our, our mailing list or just uh, stay on our blog. Uh, so a few highlights from our study. Um, 
this generation, you know, clearly, you know, they're very busy. You know, you guys have all got amazing extracurriculars. You're always on, you know, waking up early, going to class, um, and then, you know, late night study sessions. Uh, but you're still getting a lot of video content in as well. Like, you're still getting to watch a lot of TV. And um, so we noticed that a lot of it's happening between 6 o'clock and midnight. Um, and but those of you that are still left watching TV it, on TV, we also know that you're using multiple devices at the same time. So 84% will watch video content on TV with two other devices happening at the same time. And we all know about like a second and third screen. Um, we know that they've got smartphones and other devices. But uh, maybe should really have you be thinking twice about how are we going to be buying TV ad time, knowing that hey, they're probably not even watching it. They're actually their attentions have drifted elsewhere. Uh, and then also consumption across multiple devices. So if you strip out TV at different day parts, we know that, that it's fairly equal weighting between tablet, desktop, mobile phone, and laptop. Uh, this is a sample size of roughly 500, and uh, assuming, or not assuming, but only targeting those people that own those devices. So we're not saying everybody owns a tablet. It's just, it's just to get an understanding of time of day and what kind of uh, vehicle is serving up that content. So definitely a, a very interesting chart as knowing that uh, mobile phone is actually a, a pretty sizable chunk. Um, and really to kind of flip over the switch on that, uh, over seven hours of mobile content is being consumed uh, by this generation every month. Uh, this, this information is fairly well known. It's the one reference that is not our own uh, survey data, uh, but in fact came from a, a different study from Piper uh, Jeffrey uh, about two months ago. So very interesting. And then also knowing that 50% of uh, college students uh, have e either already own or are planning to buy an iPhone. So very, very interesting. Interesting. Um, and this is a generation that's agnostic to different content sources. So where are you getting your video content? It sounds like it doesn't matter where it's coming from. You, you want what you want. You're going to pull from the most convenient source possible. And if you look at what our, what our research showed is it's fairly much, you know, Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, YouTube kind of stacking up big and tall there uh, as being the primary places you're going to get this video content. But then also premium cable and basic cable seem to be getting a smaller share. Uh, it different times during the day. So very, uh, very interesting. And then of those of you that are using online sources, um, you're preferring laptops. So among, the, uh, among these different content channels, YouTube, Hulu, Netflix, we see a lot of usage among you know, laptops, uh, even mobile phone. Um, and even you know, if we look at PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Wii, those seem to be you know, amazing ways to, to get that video content as well and get it on demand. Uh, and then also, I think what's cool is, uh, is and I would love to open up and discuss as well, is how are you sharing that video content through your social graph? What does that share mean to you when you set it out there? What kind of content are you most likely to share? And uh, it turns out that if, if, if Daniel here is watching a piece of video content and uh, Monica sees that he's watching that, uh, she is 70% 70, 70 more likely uh, to view that content is a direct result of noticing that Daniel's watching that. So you think of the new Facebook integrations where the application is actually showing you who's listening to what, like Spotify and Netflix. Uh, they're very likely to click through and watch it if they know their friends are watching it. So it's a real direct endorsement. Um, and again, you guys will, will be able to pull that information uh, off of our blog very shortly. So let's kind of just open it up to our students. Um, as we look across our four here, uh, notice we've got four and not five. We've had a little bit of a, a change. So uh, maybe if each one of you could just tell us uh, your name and uh, your major and uh, also uh, you know, a favorite uh, TV show. Daniel, I'll let you open up. My name is Daniel uh, Oje and uh what was it, major, uh, cinema major, and uh, TV show, uh, let's see, does it have to be current? No. No? Okay. Uh, I've been watching a lot of uh, Roseanne on Netflix lately, actually. Um, my name's Monica Bravetsky, and I'm a cinema, oh. A little bit closer, can you just hold just a little bit closer, guys, when you're talking? Is that better? Okay. <laughs> I'm Monica Bravetsky, and I'm a cinema production major as well, and I think that I was watching Planet Earth, so. 
My name is Monique Severio. Um, I'm a nutrition science and toxicology major, and I'm watching The Office. Um, my name is Kirsten, and I'm a sociology and biology major, and I've been watching Samantha Who. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, so we've got five basic questions lined up. If at any time you'd like to raise your hand and inject, please do so. And uh, feel free to kind of, you know, help these guys along, help me along uh, with any additional questions. So thank you very much. Um, so question number one, uh, what is your favorite way to watch video content? I just showed some charts that showed you guys are pulling content from all different places. Um, so if you just want to open up and let's talk about what is your, your own personal favorite way to get video content and watch it. Like where or what? Well, like Netflix. What, what, what uh, devices and then what platforms? Platforms being Netflix, YouTube, uh, well, with TV, that's basic cable, and um, I'll either watch Netflix on my laptop or PS3. So you have a PS3. Who else watches uh, streaming video on their gaming console? I also have a PS3, and I'm watching Netflix on PS3 and also on my laptop and my iPad um, so that I can take it with me and it's more accessible. So you like the portability of it? I don't um, use a gaming device to view, but I do have multiple friends that use Wii and PlayStation 3 as well um, to view content, and I view it with them on their devices. Uh, I don't have cable, and I don't probably will never have cable because I don't feel like I need to at this point. I'll uh, view via my laptop or my phone, um, but less so my phone because it doesn't load as quickly. Now, what reason? Do you find yourself moving from, say, cable TV and watching basic cable, premium cable, over to uh, these new devices and new platforms? What, what is really the impetus behind that and why you're cutting the cord on, on cable? I, I haven't had cable for like five years now, and I'm particularly annoyed at the advertisements that we get via cable. So I prefer Netflix and um, YouTube so that I don't really have to be interrupted by those messages. Yeah, I totally agree. I would say I don't want to watch cable because uh, primarily I can skip a lot of the commercials online. You know, I can skip through them. And also, um, anything that I could find on television, I can pretty much find online um, through some sort of source. So <laughs> it's not necessary. <laughs> Uh, we did actually test for those of you that uh, did get content from not so legal sources, uh, other file sharing, things of that nature. Uh, this, this is fair game. Do you, do you go about getting content other ways outside of what is kind of established? Sure. I'm, the first thing I look for is whatever's free and that's not going to interrupt what I'm doing. I don't know. I think when I was younger, I did a lot of illegal downloading. Um, now I feel like I have more inclination to invest my money in projects that I view are something that I identify with morally. So I would spend a significant amount of money to buy a movie by a director that I respected as opposed to paying for a subscription. And a lot of those particular movies, tagging on what she said, don't really show advertisements like we're used to seeing them. They're more about um, the views and ideas based on the very uh, conscious place where the documentary or film comes from. And I appreciate those things more than just watching sort of like a mindless advertisement that seems like it's directed towards trying to sell me on something without telling me that it's selling me on something. So if I was to try and sell you something, <laughs> um, <laughs> how, how it, we were kind of talking earlier about the need for just transparency of not needing to just come out and give you a smoke screen, uh, but, net, but be honest and upfront about what we're trying to do and therefore bring you on board in a very more honest fashion. Uh, d what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I feel like we're all onto it at this point. Like we understand that you're trying to advertise to us because you need us to buy your product, but we, we get it. So sell it to us in a way that you know, makes more sense. We're, we're not dumb to it anymore. Well we're put. smart people at this point. 
um, most of us. So, you know, if you're trying to sell us something, then you know, be straightforward about it, you know, and, um, you know, appeal to what entertains us and, and not over-sexualizing things and, you know, making it about the fact that you're advertising to conscious people, people that understand that everybody has to sell their products so that they can, you know, move forward with whatever it is that they're doing and that we would like to get behind you if you bring us on the level of the same playing field where you're talking to us eye to eye. Excellent. Uh, second question. What are your thoughts about online video ads? So when you're watching Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, what are your thoughts about the advertising that you're seeing as you're watching that content? You know, it, we, we all want to uh, get at our TV show. We all want to watch that video. But we know that in order to get it for free, we have to kind of put up with certain things. We got to put up with advertising from marketers. And so what, what is working with you in terms of the ads that you're seeing and, uh, and, and what's not? I don't know. I would personally say that I would rather pay to watch something than to subject myself to watching the commercials of it, for it. No, no, no. Well, no. Well, I agree with that, but um, I'll wait. Hold on. <laughs> I agree with that, except when you when you're forced to watch the advertisements, it it just starts getting irritating. Like when you can't fast forward through them, you just sit there and then you don't. You just ignore it, so I don't really think there's a point in having them. But then, if they're if they're sponsoring what you want to watch, you sort of just have to deal with it. And it, I don't know. I just dealing with it doesn't seem good enough. Just <laughs> dealing with it and putting up with it. Is there ever any advertising that you've seen online where you were really enjoying it? Again, this allows us to be more personal in how we go about marketing to you. Um, well, it has to be entertaining, and it also, I, I pay attention to the ads that hit me through the internet or through what I'm watching. Like, it has to sort of entertain me and appeal to me at some intellectual level because I pay attention to what they're trying to say. If I don't, if I don't agree with it or if I just don't care for it, you know, like, I, I actually share what I find interesting. I share with my friends because... It's if I like the company, then you know I want to bring them business. I want to bring them attention. And if I don't, if it's not like interesting, then you know I'll just ignore it. I also wanted to mention. Um, I I think that there are certain ads that are really entertaining and that I do want to watch. And I really enjoy the option of being able to continue watching or skip some of it, depending on if the first like five to ten seconds like grabs me or not. I watch a lot of YouTube and on YouTube, you know, there are a lot of ads like that where it'll show you a couple seconds and then you can skip it if you want to or not. And there are some of them that I'll actually watch all the way through just because it hooked me from the beginning. And I like that it's, it seems kind of like fair that, you know, we'll show you the commercial, we'll show you a little bit, and then you can watch the rest if you want. If not, you can skip it. And then I still saw you know, the first five seconds, so I, that brand is in my mind now. So I'm still thinking about that brand, but I didn't necessarily watch the whole thing. So. Yeah, I can really appreciate a clever advertisement, and a clever advertisement that's funny. Um, I'm more likely to watch the entire advertisement if it's funny and clever, and more likely to hate it and like never use anything from the brand if it's really, really dumb. <laughs> well put. Um, thinking about how ads, in, especially within a video, with the context of video content, are injected. I think, Daniel, you just nailed it a minute ago when you said you like those different options in terms of the kinds of commercials uh, that you see. And you want to be able to pick and choose how you watch those, knowing that you're going to have to put up with some of it. I think a great idea would be, uh, I mean, I don't know how, how possible this is, but to have an option between choosing between two different commercials from the same brand um, would definitely make me want to watch the commercials more. Being able to like have a link where I could choose, oh, this one looks more entertaining than this one, and I'll watch that one instead. I don't know, just a recommendation. But really entertaining wit, humor, transparency, honesty, Seems like those are the basic veins and pillars running through you guys. Is, is there anything we're missing here or anything that, that you feel differently about? 
Um, I would strongly agree with that because I think that if your audience does discover that there's something that you're misleading them on, it can sort of make your company the target of a lot of negativity, especially since we can access information so easily. So. Now let, let's talk for a minute about the power to share this content among your peers and friends because I, that was a really great point that you have that power and you, you're conscious of it that, that you know that if this represents who I am, this is a brand that I like, that, that uh, this is a part of my endorsement when I share it out. Like it's not just endorsing the video content but it's also endorsing my, uh, my uh, approval of the brand and that company and what it's doing. Um, do you think through all those things when, you, when you're sharing a piece of video content? Does it get that cerebral? Or are you just sharing it out if it's just funny and humorous? I totally, if I'm going to share a video, I uh, definitely am putting it out there saying, like, I approve, I'm like putting my approval stamp on it. Like, I approve of this message and I like it and I want to share it with everyone else. If I don't love it, then I'm not going to share it. If I like it and I don't love it, I'm not going to share it. If I'm going to put it out there and share it with other people, it means that I really like it and I really want other people to see it. And I think that comes with uh, the fact that we are now all our own online celebrities and we can endorse the brands that we want to endorse or not support the brands that we don't want to support. And we all know that, which is really cool. Wow. None of this has been planted, by the way. <laughs> Fantastic, Daniel. You know, yes. All right, just to repeat that question, uh, could you give us a specific example of something you have shared recently with your, with your friends in your social community? Um, somebody sent me a link of this documentary made by Jennifer Siebel Newsom um, called Misrepresentation. Um, it was sort of like, it was a YouTube like a trailer to the video. And I watched the trailer, I'd never seen the movie, but I liked the message so much that I sent it out to my entire, my entire phone book like everybody in my email and um, on Facebook. And uh, I also represent Facebook for many of the groups that I'm working with and I posted it on all of their Facebooks also. I actually also shared misrepresentation and saw that on YouTube. And then I found out that it was a documentary that was made and that's only airing on OWN, the OWN network, uh, which is kind of upsetting because I want to be able to see it and I'm sure I will eventually. Um, I did share that as well. But are we talking like a, an ad or are we talking like any video? Any video or an ad? Okay. Well, then let's, let's actually, let's serve it up that way. Let's talk about a specific advertisement that you had shared with your friends. I share commercials. If they're really funny, then I'll send it to everybody. A specific example. Well, uh, <laughs> if, you can, if you can pull one out, it'd be great. I share... Um, Recently, I shared some old Skittles commercials because those are usually funny. But um, I also share stuff that have important messages. Like recently was um, the Davis case. So I felt really strongly about that. And the advertisements from Amnesty International, I would post that all the time just to bring out the message. One thing I've recently shared was the uh, new Old Spice ads with like the dudes that that uh, kind of it's kind of like a parody video, and I think that that was really smart and funny um, for that brand because they it feels like they kind of reinvented themselves and also uh, because things are happening so fast in those ads I don't know how many of you have seen them but things are happening really quickly and it, it keeps your attention and it's also like they're kind of parodying themselves, like they're kind of making fun of themselves, which is really funny and that made me want to share it with my friends because it was, it was entertaining and it, and it was also kind of, it made me feel like they were kind of respectful of, uh, of uh, our generation because they get what we're into and, and what is entertaining for us. So that's something that I shared recently. Do you see brands and, and advertising taking themselves too seriously sometimes? Like perhaps a little bit of making fun of themselves is okay and it doesn't necessarily hurt the brand? Yeah, I'm I appreciate that much more than uh, a brand taking themselves too seriously, which I think that we see a lot in bigger name, bigger name companies. Um, so yeah, I agree that that's true. I don't think a brand hurt, uh, making fun of themselves would ever uh, in my eyes, hurt their, uh, I don't know what the word is for it, legality or whatever. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
Uh, third question, how do you prefer to receive advertising? I, I think we kind of hit on this a little bit. We can let the conversation go wherever it goes. The slides will fall wherever they may. Um, but in terms of ads, if we look at, say, linear and nonlinear ads, I think we already kind of spoke about linear ads, which is essentially it's stopping you for a moment and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be communicated to you and then uh, you're going to get on with it. Uh, what about like the, the ads that are planted within the video content? So those could be anything from, say, a gamified layer of finding the Easter egg or noticing something mid-clip or uh, on a lower third or a lower uh, section of the screen. What do you think about that advertising that takes place during the video clip? For me, that's really annoying. Anytime that little bar shows up in the bottom, I immediately exit and I don't remember any of the brands that actually show up down there because I don't want them in the way of my content. I don't want to like be viewing that. So I totally just X out of it as soon as possible. Anyone else? I agree. <laughs> mm, thank you. Um, okay, so what <laughs> brands are getting video content right in your book? What brands have you guys noticed? And uh, we, you, we mentioned a couple just briefly, but uh, let's, let's talk about the brands that are really just doing this right and just nailing it with you guys. Might want to take a moment, just think. Anyone? Really, the first thing I think about is are all of the ones that annoy me, the ones that I don't think are good. So I'm, I can't remember really. I wish that I could say that there was something that stood out that was awesome that I was like, that's great, and everybody should do it like that. This is a little disturbing. It's too bad we don't have more examples of great brands that are, are doing this well. Um, feel free to inject, please. Well, I mean, usually when they're good, they're usually, they only last for like three seconds, so it's like you think they're amazing like right then, and you'll share it, but then after that, you sort of just forget about it. Like now, commercials and ads, they're sort of irrelevant. Like they just entertain you for like a few seconds, and that's it. There's no real like big message to it. Um, I don't know, I would say that now to have your brand be remembered, you have to associate it with something. So like a larger group or a certain ideal, I would say stick stronger in someone's mind rather than an image or a name. And if you are in connection with that ideal, then people will buy into that, you know, the same principle as selling a lifestyle, right? Daniel, I saw, I see you fidgeting. Is there anything you want to inject there? Well, the question's really hard for me because uh, there are things that I can think of, but I can't remember what brands they are because there are so many brands out there and there's so much. I view so many videos every day <coughs> that I can't remember the names of the brands, but, I, you know, it's okay. so I'm just kind of, like, struggling. If, if that, if all very fair. Um, what brand do you have in mind that just personally gets it with you? Let's Let's... Let's forget about advertising, video, everything, and just give us one, what is it about that brand that you just really stand behind? Apple, like, they're just simple. They just play music and they show their product, like, just spinning, I don't know. Like, that's the only thing that pops up right now. Okay. Are we talking about subject matter, like what makes me feel like I want to support a brand? Yes. Um, I really like Method. They're a line of like cleaning products. They do like, uh, you guys might know. We Method know Method. Is. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> um, I really like Method. I really like. Um, um, they don't. They don't have a lot of advertisement. I don't think. I mean, I know them because of um, sort of like their interaction in my community. And I really like their message, and I'm always recommending that people use their products um, based on, you know, how clean they are, how they're how they're very good for the environment and for people themselves. And I feel like they're really good at um, giving, like, on their website, uh, promoting like information about understanding and like knowing what you're using, going into like the very intuitive part of advertising that we're talking about. How important is it? When it, it, when it comes to a brand that you love or one that you'll get behind, is it to know what is that brand doing out there in the world? 
and how is it, say, being a, a brand for, for cause or doing good out in the world? I think it's very important. I mean, and, and it doesn't have to do with just like being green or being conscious about the environment. Um, I appreciate a brand that's conscious in general about society. Thank you. Uh, so let's just like open this up to the room now. We, we do have, I um, guess we have plenty of time. I hope we do. And does anyone have any questions for our, for our panel? I have a question. Um, so TV, this is about content more than advertising. Um, TV companies and, uh, are, are putting some of their content behind paywalls and or imposing uh, waiting windows uh, and, and TV everywhere type models. Uh, how does that affect you? Um, say you, you're, you enjoy a, you know, a specific program and all of a sudden you know, it's, it, it's, it's harder to get to. Uh, would you be more inclined to abandon it to download it illegally, uh, just wait for a waiting window to, to happen, or, or how would you respond to that? Is there any way you can rephrase a question to sure. uh, to incorporate things like I mean I'm not I don't I'm not sure what a waiting window is or okay. some of the other so, things. So um, for example, um, Fox is is imposed an eight day waiting window on new Fox content on Hulu. So um, you know if if you have a favorite program you know through the Fox network, all of a sudden you know you can't you can't see it the next day anymore. You have to wait eight days. And then in some cases, some of these companies are considering pulling back, uh, some of the broadcast companies are considering TV everywhere type models like that, pulling some of their content you know, back. So how does that affect you? Uh, are, are you would you possibly you know, abandon that content altogether, go somewhere else? Would you wait for a waiting window, for example, if there was one? Um, it's a very, you know, sort of overarching generic kind of question, but I mean, how, how would you feel about, you know, content companies pulling back on, on their offering, their video offerings online? Um, well, I would first search for it somewhere else to see if I can get it, and if I, if I couldn't, then I'd probably just go back. But I would try really hard to see if I can get it somewhere else. <laughs> I agree with her, but um, usually if there is a waiting window, I just, it's, it's just something that's convenient. So if I have to wait eight days, I usually just don't care for it. I don't watch it. If I have time, then I'll come back like after a week or so and watch it. But it's really, I guess it's not that big of a deal. Um, is your, are you talking about like online or? Yeah, online. Well, uh, particularly, you said you don't have cable, uh, right? right? So yeah. I, I presume you're, if you're watching any network television content, it's online, right? Yeah, so. totally. Perfect example. I want to see the new episodes of Dexter, and I haven't been able to watch them yet, and I want to see them really badly. <laughs> and <laughs> I tried searching for them online, and, and it's really difficult to like download them or get them online. Um, and, if, and if they're not released in some way where I can watch them online, then I'll probably, my reaction is, okay, I guess I'll wait for them to come out on Netflix or something like that, or, or DVD or something like that. So. Um, yeah, I would just kind of like give up on watching the whole season until it came out in some way that I could watch it all at once. So I would say don't hold out, don't <laughs> extend the waiting because yeah, I would just wait. I would I would just be like, okay, well, I don't want to watch any of the season until I can watch it all at once, I guess. And then we wait till the end of the semester and binge watch TV with no advertisements. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. And then. Uh, no, just another question. We talked a little bit about um, you know video ads that you remember, and you guys had a hard time remembering any ones that were memorable for you, which is fair. Um, but uh, just uh, you're familiar with, especially Daniel. I think you said you watch a lot of YouTube. Um, there's a lot of different um, ad formats on YouTube, um, pre rolls, and you know there's some ad selector ones where you can choose whether you continue watching the ad or not. Then there's um, you know overlays that that come through those little, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I, do any of those, uh, which type of advertising do you prefer since we, we've established that, you know, there is this, um, you know, agreement between, you know, you're going to watch the content, but you're, you may have to see advertising. So which formats do you prefer? Uh, I guess the ones that are kind of intermittent through the video, like the ones at the beginning of the videos, uh, I like more than the ones that pop up on the bottom. What did you say over? What was that first? Overlays. One? What is that? Uh, it's an ad that, um, well, overlay or underlay comes. It's an ad that comes up in the middle of your viewing experience, and it's like sort of at the bottom. It sort of oh yeah, pops, pops up, up in front bit. of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a fan of overlays. Yeah, yeah, me neither. It reminds me a little bit of porn. 
<laughs> like, so. Right on. I, yeah, I would prefer ads that are full screen that either are intermittent throughout the video or at the beginning of the video. Yeah, I, I agree. The beginning of, of the video, um, at the like he said earlier, I just click out of it as soon as possible mm -hmm. if it's at the bottom. Excellent. And I think one comment that came up earlier when we were all having coffee earlier was that uh, if you see an ad and you're watching it on Netflix or a 60 minute, you know this, this commercial is going to run, it's got the countdown timer going, uh, how many of you actually sit there and watch it and engage in it and really think about it versus say, I don't know, what would be the, what would be the alternative if you didn't like the ad that was currently up there? What would you do? Would you click out of it? Would you turn the volume down? How often does that happen? Like when an ad's running a couple of seconds and I know that I'm not really responsive to it, I'll mute it so I don't have to listen to it. And then I'll unmute it when the media, when the... And you know, you know if this is something that you want to continue watching within the first how many seconds? Five. Five seconds? Yeah, I'd say five. Hi, this is Carolyn Perodi. I'm with OMD. Just a quick question. Do you guys ever watch live TV or is it always delayed or skipped? I don't, I can't remember the last time I watched live TV. Yeah, I don't watch live TV either. When you say live TV, what exactly, can you elaborate a little bit more? <laughs> so when it's on tele, it's on the TV screen and it's on Monday night at eight o'clock. Do you guys oh, ever you mean like, tune in like, when it's actually being broadcast over the... Like nighttime game? talk shows and stuff like that? Yeah, or just, you know, The Office when it's airing, you know, Thursday night at whatever time. Oh, like cable. Oh, okay. I don't have cable television, so I, yeah. Not like sports live, right? Like, like sports? Sports or like sports the first would be an time example, that they or just any kind of prime time or late night where it's airing the rest of the country is seen at the same time. I would love to watch something like that, but I feel like online, I, so, online, what I don't. What is this live TV you online, speak of? It's the new thing. It's the new thing. I don't, I don't feel like online I'm really exposed to very many live things. If it is something live, it's like breaking news and I'll watch something, you know, that's being recorded. Like, How do you find out about an, 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 an impending earthquake or tsunami? They, emergency Facebook. alert. Yeah. <laughs> Word of mouth. Word yeah. of mouth. No, but really, I, I agree with him. I would love to watch some, some live things, but um, just because I, I don't have cable and I, I don't really appreciate cable, I sort of miss out on those things, and you really have to search hard to find them like online. Yeah, yeah. If there was a live late-night talk show online, I would watch it, sure, all the time. Or yeah. on Netflix. I've watched like that live like show. Yeah, totally. Online. It'd be really fun. I'd be tweeting while I was watching it to my friends. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Kelly Connors, and I appreciate you guys being here and being so honest with us. Uh, I'd like to know if there's been any video or video content or TV or movie that's inspired you recently. If there's anything that actually sort of either made you angry, made you happy, made you do something or interested you in a, in a way, I'd just be interested in your uh, comments. And you're talking about movies or documentaries, not like advertisements or anything like that. Anything, anything. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested. You guys are you guys are media junkies. You know, you, you, Good find, you find your way, right? You find your way to the content you're interested in. I'm just be interested. Tell me something about something that might have inspired you or um, got you to act or change something. I'd just be interested. Whatever it is. I recently saw Misrepresentation by Jennifer Subal Newsom here in the city, and that was really great. It was really inspiring. I appreciated the message of that. I felt like it was very straightforward. Um, there was a lot of really important um, people saying things in the movie that I appreciated, and uh, also like Forks Over Knives, which was also uh, a film that was developed in, in this area and then also uh, aired in the Independent Film Festival. Forks Over Knives. Um, things that make me upset in media that I watch are the, I guess it's kind of uh, going along with the misrepresentation documentary type thing. Um, just bodies in general, um, you know, sex is huge in advertising and media and stuff like that. And um, when I see an ad that has this specific looking model 
male or female, it'll make me not want to watch it. I'll totally just shut it off because it's, it's kind of upsetting. Um, I know there, there have been like documentaries and ads and a lot of things out there on like uh, beauty and uh, all that kind of thing in the industry. And uh, I just feel like most of our ads don't represent real people. They don't represent us anymore. And I don't want to watch things that don't represent us. Yeah, I think that's one, one of the things that upsets me and I'm sort of over the over-sexualization of things in general. I don't feel like it's, it's advertising anything that I want to be a part of. Daniel, I really appreciated your, your injection there about something that doesn't represent us, doesn't represent who we are. Could you give us an example of something that, that you feel does represent you? That's a challenging uh, question there. I'll need a second to think about it. And okay, you're saying we'll on TV, on television, on average measurement that represents us? Yeah. I'll let you guys think about that. Any more questions from the room? I don't know. I have something to say about that representing us, though. I think it's difficult because all of us, we live here in San Francisco. It's a very, like, diverse place. And the thing is, I don't necessarily know if he means us as in him and us standing here, but, like, us as in people who have our own, like, individual sets of, like, morals and ideas, like, to represent something that is a real person instead of, like, an image that obviously doesn't have, like, we don't want static characters in our advertisement, I guess I could say. It's very interesting. Um, oh, we got one right here. Okay. Angela from Adapt TV. Um, how do you guys know what to search for um, when you guys are looking for content? What, how do you guys know what video to watch when you go online? Is there a specific site you guys go to to get access? Or? Yeah, when you're deciding what content you're going to watch or you're thinking about watching content, how are you searching for it and how are you finding that content and that you may not have already known was out there? How do you kind of open up and discover new content that you hadn't found through search and through... Uh, is that, is that about wrong the lines? Okay. In regards to like television, movies... video about specific subject matter or so you you go online you don't net you're not necessarily setting out with an agenda but you know you've got a little time and you want to watch something entertaining or enjoyable how are you searching for it and discovering new pieces of content so what we're interested in so you're asking what we're interested in watching If I have a little bit of extra time that I, you know, and I'm like, oh, I want to watch some videos, probably I'll go on Facebook and, and see if anybody's posted a video on their page. Um, for me in specific, I'm really interested in high quality YouTube videos, so I'll go on Wikipedia and I'll look up the top uh, uh, subscribed people on YouTube. And then I'll therefore go from a link on Wikipedia to their YouTube page. And then on their YouTube page, they have a bunch of other people that they've liked videos or so forth and so on. And I'll just keep clicking that way. Yeah, I don't know. Recently, I've been trying to filter it by using edu or .org. So you're more, you're, sounds like you're likely to follow certain people and search for certain people and see what they're watching in order to understand, you know, is this endorsed by someone that I would then also want to watch content? Yeah, totally. I'll go on my friends' Twitters or Facebooks and look up what they're watching. Or people that we've subscribed to on like, YouTube. Like, if, I, if I have extra time, then that would be the first thing I did, was check out all the, the people that I've subscribed to and see if they have any new videos up or watch something like that. Most watch videos on YouTube, I'll like totally browse the most watched videos of the day or the month or whatever. Um, what original video content are you watching? Just kind of piggybacks on what you were just talking about. Um, you know, piece of content that's video that you cannot get, you know, through TV. Um, such as, I don't know, something like Funny or Die, if you go to that site or if you, you know. Yeah. The YouTube channel partners. 
What are examples of people that I watch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just some examples, yeah, examples of original video content that you guys consume. I mean, I watch a lot of like the most subscribed people on YouTube just to see what they're doing and, and how, you know, what kind of quality their videos are, like Ray William Johnson and Shaden Dawson and people like that on YouTube. Does that answer the question? Sure. Uh, sort of. Uh, and uh, well, uh, another question is, do, do you, are you familiar with brand entertainment? Um, like, you know, any piece of video content that has a brand integration in it somewhere that's sponsored by a major brand? Have you ever watched any branded videos? No. You may have watched some and not realized. <laughs> I think we just don't remember the brand behind it, but I mean, obviously, we're watching a lot of content that involves advertisement. What would be one way or a way that would make content and video content by brands more memorable for you guys? Is there a particular way, and I think we touched upon that earlier, but just to capture that again, if you guys don't mind talking about that. I think it needs to be more straightforward. I think that we're really good at not paying attention to advertisements anymore because we understand that we're being advertised to. And I don't particularly appreciate people sort of trying to advertise me in a convoluted way. If you're trying to advertise to me, I'm more likely to pay attention and remember it if you do it in a very straightforward and humorous, clever way. You know, it's, it's very simple and easy, and um, I would be into it if that's what the system was like. Otherwise, I'm doing a very good job of doing the best at my brain that my brain can do to ignore it and pretend it like never happened, and I think that's sort of what you're seeing here. It's well, yeah, I mean, it's exhausting to, like, uh, see someone present something to you and there's all of these, like, special effects and, like, sex and all of these things that are, like, pulling at very base emotions. And you would like to be a rational person and you would like to make a rational decision and you're being overloaded with all of this stimulus. Like, if someone came out and presented to me their item in the way that they would present it to an intelligent adult who is making a rational decision on what they would like to purchase, that would be like a relief because finally I don't have to take hours like analyzing and picking apart like all of these symbols that are supposed to convince me of something. Like, I'm tired. Woo, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Very honest. Um, right here. Hi, uh, Allison Van Houten from Google. Uh, quick question, uh, just a follow-up question to what you were saying about, um, there's been a lot of talk about entertainment and advertising that's entertainment. And so I'm curious as to what you think about advertisements that are actually entertainment. So movie trailers, gaming, films, you, you mentioned trailers that you followed to their YouTube videos. Um, you know, is that different to you from like a, a mac and cheese or something like that? And how do you engage with advertising that actually is entertainment? Thank you. Well, that's really exhausting, right? <laughs> I love movie trailers. I love movie trailers. I love watching movie trailers online. I'll do, I could do it all day. I also really like movie trailers, although I think that um, like video game trailers are uh, a lot like regular advertisements. Like I, I saw one recently, and it's like very um, like so many different messages at the same time, and there was like hip hop music and like people shooting at each other, and I didn't even really know till the end what was really going on, and I was like, oh. Video game advertisement, again, and that's irritating. But the movie trailers, I feel, are really good examples of straightforward advertisement. You know, you're advertising for a movie that seems funny, and I want to see it now. Is that what you were asking, or were you asking about product placement? Um, sorry, more about the actual like um, movie trailers themselves. So um, whether or not you realize it, the, the trailers that you see sometimes are paid, like if you see it at the top of a YouTube page, but it's inherently entertainment um, because it's, it's showcasing that movie. So I was just curious about how you reacted to things like that. Do you appreciate, um, you know, is it a form of information for you, even if it's an advertisement, if it's something that's entertaining? Oh yeah, absolutely, but I mean, that's entertainment. So when you're advertising it to us, you're being honest because you're advertising entertainment. I'm 
are celebrity, do celebrity endorse products and ads, do they resonate more with you? Uh, me personally, no. Celebrity endorsements for me don't mean anything anymore because I feel like the, they're just being paid to endorse a product um, unless they seem really genuine and honest about it and they talk about it. Um, you know, if, if celebrities are just in commercials and they're doing some fun little commercial for some sort of brand, uh, I don't really have more interest in it because the celebrities in it because I know they're just being paid tons of money to advertise for that brand. Yeah, it, ju it just seems fake. Like when you see a celebrity in a commercial or an, an advertisement, it just... It doesn't, it's not that appealing because they're not really, yeah, it's not real. Hi, I'm Jacqueline, also from OMD. So it sounds like what you guys are saying is that advertising for anything that's entertaining is fine. Like, oh, here's the newest movie, you want to know about that. But what about everyday products? How do you guys find out about things that are, you know, maybe not as exciting? It's not the newest movie, but like, what hair product you use or what household cleaning products? What, how do you get that information? I actually do a lot of label reading. So <laughs> like when I go to the grocery store, I'll actually look through the ingredients of the product that I'm buying and then I'll continue to buy that product if I think it's good. Like, I mean, if to say I enjoy Amy's, that's a brand, right? I buy that stuff consistently because I've read the label and I feel that the ingredients are wholesome. It's funny, that question is, is really interesting to me because uh, I feel like when I'm looking for a specific product, like a hair product or, um, or something of that nature, the first thing I would do is, is either go to the store and look on the shelf or ask my friends what they've used before that works well for them. There, I, I've never been like, oh, I need a product. Let me go and find a video about this product, <laughs> ever. Um, one thing that, that we did talk about briefly, I, and I think it's a really good uh, topic, is the idea of the kinds of content that you're watching that provides real functional value to you, such as like how-to videos on YouTube. Um, those seem to be, those seem to resonate because they actually provide you with some tangible value for watching that content. Uh, if, that, if a brand was putting that on or giving you some added information or value through a video, uh, is that something that you would uh, consume and be, and be favorable about? And uh, how often are you on there searching for video content in order to solve some of the issues you come about every day? Yeah, YouTube how videos are the best. Um, if you could pull it off and, and do some type of advertisement using, for example, on hair product and, and put it in like five minutes and show me how to do it, then I would totally watch it. I mean, it's a lot longer, but you're actually showing me how to do something. And I would appreciate that much, much more than just the advertisement. Yeah, I love how-to videos. If there's anything that I don't know how, how to do, like if I'm building something or a new project or if I want to use something, I'll definitely uh, look up a how-to video. And I think that if there was a, a product in a how-to video, I, w I mean, I would definitely probably use that product before other products, or I would look up and compare prices and that kind of thing. But if there were um, you know, products in a how-to video, I would, it would definitely be on my mind more to use that product, I think. Yeah, because how-to videos make things functional and they make them relevant to our lives. So if you were to put something in a how-to video and show us how to use it and how it can be effective in a short period of time, then we're definitely more likely to use that product. Excellent. Anything else? Sir? Hey guys, awesome panel. Really great to hear your, your, uh, your thoughts. Um, I thought your point about being overloaded was really interesting. And um, <clears throat> I wonder whether that also um, affects how you think about like where you where you watch stuff, you know? Because you go to a web, you know, on the web, the web is super complicated. Lots of content and ads and links and you know, lots of stuff on on a web page. Whereas if you're looking at YouTube or something on a tablet, you know, there's there's a big variation in the complexity of where you can find stuff, right? And TV used to be really simple, now it's more complicated. So does that factor into your, into your thinking or how you use stuff? 
Um, well, I would say I think there was a bit of a miscommunication. It isn't necessarily that I feel like I can't handle finding material. It's just that when I find the material, I want to understand the point of view of the person who's producing it. And if there is not a straightforward presentation of those facts, then it overwhelms me. So I guess to answer your question, although other pla although platforms may be easily accessible, it won't make me choose it over something if I disagreed with it. Yeah, I mean, I certainly wouldn't say that you're you know, not capable of deciphering anything. I was just more getting at whether you end up having a preference for, you know, for things that are sort of presented, you know, that are just less, less complicated or less busy. Absolutely, of course. Now, uh, we live in kind of an ideal world sometimes as marketers where we want to say a lot about, hey, you're watching TV, but you're also on your phone and tablet. If we can create this seamless experience so that you can engage with us in a more holistic fashion, like, wouldn't that just be wonderful? Um, when you're watching and consuming video content, yeah, we know that you've got these other devices happening around you. Um, have you ever, say, watched something, seen a brand pop up, and done some other action? And what was that action? Has it ever caused you to search for a price or find out if it's in a local store? Um, are, we, uh, are, are these opportunities for brands to help kind of provide you with more utility in a way that's going to help get you to become more active with that content? Or are we, um, or are we missing the mark on that? I think when it's... Um when I'm watching something online and I see an ad and it replays over and over again and every break in the show, it plays the same commercial. It just doesn't make, like, it seems unattractive after that. Like, I don't want to try to find out about it because I've seen it so many times. I don't know. Can you rephrase the question? Yeah, um, I probably wasn't terribly clear there. Um, so you're watching video content, and it's happening on your laptop. And I know that you've got a tablet. I know you've got an e-reader, uh, and you have various devices at your disposal. Um, have you ever been prompted to, to say, uh, as you're watching that video content, to say, look up some additional information or take action uh, right then and there? And what was that activity? I mean, whenever that's happened for me, it's been some type of social movement, like something that I may have, like some advertisement for like a documentary that I saw that made me want to look it up on my iPad based on the fact that I had just seen it and want to find out more about it. I mean, not really like a, another okay. type of product. All right. Uh, any last questions? Um, I think... Uh, when I go back to that question, uh, what, what, what inspires me or uh, creates an emotional reaction? Um, I said I've been watching Roseanne a lot lately on Netflix, and I think one of the reasons that I really enjoy that show is that uh, it's, it's, it seems like it's real people with real bodies, and uh, they're realistic, and they're not so idealistic. I think a lot of uh, advertising and uh, people in advertising uh, that look, you know, like the perfect image and that kind of thing are, are um, kind of upsetting to our, I'm speaking for our generation, um, but uh, upsetting to us because uh, those ideals are really uh, seem unreachable for a lot of us and it makes us detract from the products and things that are promoting that ideal. Um, I feel like we're kind of at a point where we're not really that interested in living up to those ideals anymore. Um, we're really fascinated with just being who we are and doing what we do and uh, and social movements and um, that kind of thing. So I think that's important uh, to convey to, to us. Daniel, that, that's an excellent point. And everything from our own research, from our ethnography over the summer, uh, really demonstrated that this new ideal, this new goal that you have, uh, is, you know, something that's different from your generation, say, even five years ago, are these images a success? So looking at the brands that we used to attach ourselves to and the images of success, you know, um, and what, is, what, what defines success for you today? And uh, what is a realistic or attainable goal for success for you? 
I feel like in media a lot lately it's been about having a good time and partying and going out and drinking and, and that kind of thing. And uh, personally, you know, I'm not super invested in that type of thing, but I know that's what's going on lately. And I think the reason for that is because um, it's really uh, difficult to imagine yourself being part of a small group of people who climb the corporate ladder or whatever ladder and make this big mainstream success. I feel like in advertising, a lot of it is about being rich and being wealthy and looking great and, and feeling great because you're wealthy and you look great. <laughs> and I mean, you guys can, con I mean. I mean, you're talking about um, our personal success, what we think is successful or successful as far as media goes. Yeah, I think, I think Daniel hit it in terms, of, uh, in terms of how brands and marketers convey images of success. Uh, in terms of showing off, you know, affluence and, 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 and just overall sex appeal and all these kind of classic stereotypical images. Yeah, I think that that's exactly the same way that I, I view that media believes that success is supposed to be. Yeah. How, how many of you, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, Daniel, I'll, I'll get right back to you. Um, how many of you believe that you'll be successful graduating from college in your pursuit of your dreams? Uh, we've seen, you know, it's a discouraging job market out there. You know, Occupy Wall Street is happening in, you know, cities uh, across the country and around the world, and it's, it's kind of a, a bleak uh, scenario, you know, graduating and, and trying to find your job. Um, who wants to speak to that? I think that our idea of success is different than what you might think that our idea of success is. Like, um, when I think about finishing school and going into the job market, I'm not concerned about whether I'm gonna get a job or not. Like, that, that's not what my main concern is. And whether I'm gonna be filthy rich or have all these things that you might think that we want. I mean, I don't know if that's true for you guys, but that's definitely true for me. I don't know, I think that current events happening like Occupy on Wall Street, I think that that actually gives me hope that there will be a future in which I can find success in a way that is not necessarily mainstream. Uh, for, for me personally, uh, in regards to the graduating and getting this high paying job type thing, um, I personally feel like growing up, uh, most of my peers and myself were, were told that you know, if you decide what you want to do and you go to school and you work hard at it and you get a degree and what you really like, you're instantly going to be able to get a job that pays really, really well and you're going to be able to do what you love. And I feel like that's totally unrealistic in uh, our society. Um, and that happens to a very, very, very sparse uh, few amount of people. And I feel like uh, that totally has to do with media and advertising. And that's kind of what advertising is, is to be like rich and successful, and the only way to be rich and successful and look great is if you follow this specific path, and there's no other way to get there. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, our ideas of success, like I said, are, are not always that mainstream thing that we're seeing on TV and advertisement. Like That's not what we, we want it to be, and I think that we've sort of um, come to a place in our generation where we realize that. Yeah. When I see advertisements of people driving around in really slick cars and, you know, in, in really fancy clothing that's really expensive and things like that, it just seems so unrealistic to me that I don't want to watch that kind of content. All right. It, this is all very fair enough. Uh, I think we get it. We definitely get it. Um, what about, what, what would be something that you would identify with that isn't overly stereotypical in terms of images of success? You know, I'm out on a yacht and I've got some champagne or whatever, you know. I'm, uh, w what about seeing real people like you uh, that are out there making their way in the world, not necessarily making tons of money, but they're out there doing what they love. Can brands get involved with real people and message you in a way that's like, hey, look, this person's out there doing it. You know, they're not millionaires, they're not a CEO, but hey, look, they're following their passions. Is it more about passion than it is about finance? Uh, totally. Um, that actually took me back to um, the one good advertisement that I can actually think of is, um, the, the, Allstate. the one advertisement mentioned on this panel. <laughs> on the pan the Allstate commercials. The Allstate, uh, Allstate makes the best commercials. Have you guys seen them? The, the Mayhem commercials? I'm sure you guys have yes. seen them. Those are the best commercials. And I think that they appealed to a, a multitude of different levels and uh, of, of people. 
um, one, regular people who have regular things go on in their lives and protecting people, I mean, it's about protecting people through insurance. Great, love it. I think that that really speaks to everyday people. But how transparent is that, is a brand? I'll say how transparent, I think it's very straightforward. Mm -hmm. I mean, besides the fact that the, the person, yeah, they're, they're getting they're the message out. They're around it. Yeah, they're just saying, you know, like, Allstate is here to protect you against mayhem, like, you know, the raccoon or the blind spot or whatever it is. And so, they're really funny. They're very entertaining. So if the humor, if the entertainment is attached to the unique uh, benefit that that product provides you and it's clear, then it's acceptable. Absolutely. Any final questions? Actually, uh, I think we're out of time, but uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, thank you, panel. This was great. Thanks for coming out. <laughs>